Hi everyone, welcome to another DAX challenge from Excel Fort. In today's challenge, we are going to have a look at a marketing campaign problem. The question goes like this. There's a table of in-app purchases by users in a marketing campaign. Users who make their first in-app purchase see a call to action to make more in-app purchases. The question here is to count the number of users who made additional in-app purchases as a result of this marketing campaign. Let's have a look at some details about this campaign and the question. The first point is marketing campaigns begin one day after the initial in-app purchase, meaning users who only purchased one or multiple products on the first day are not counted. This means to say that the additional purchase has to be on a future date. If the additional purchase takes place on the same day as the date of purchase, this user is not eligible for the campaign. The second point says, to be considered in the marketing campaign, users must purchase a product that is different from what they bought on their first purchase date. So the product has to be different from the first date of purchase. So there are two conditions. The dates have to be different and also the products. Different dates and different products. That's when the user becomes eligible. In order to understand this question further, let's have a look at some scenarios. The first one says, one item, one date of purchase. So this user is not included. Let's have a look at uh, a user 28. So the user has just a single purchase. So it's not, he's not eligible. And the second one, multiple products, one date of purchase. For that, we'll pick user number 49. So this user has multiple products, but he has completed his purchase on a single date. So he is not uh, eligible. The additional purchase has to be on a different date. So the third example is one product, multiple dates. So it's the other way. Let's have a look at user number 50, where the user has different dates, date of purchases, but he has purchased the same item. The fourth one is multiple products, multiple dates, but same products as the first date of purchase. He's not included. Why is that? Let's have a look at uh, user number 25. This is a bit tricky one. So this user has multiple dates as you can see 22nd, 24th and 27th. Then again he has multiple products, right? Looking at uh, his first purchase which is on 22nd of January, he has purchased two items, 114 and 115. But in his additional purchases, if you analyze, he has purchased the same items that he bought on his first date of purchase 114 and 115 although he has different dates right there has to be a different product which is not available in his first date of purchase so he's not included in the campaign let's have a look at the last one which is 46 46 this user has purchased on multiple dates and mul with multiple products. On his first day, he has purchased 102. Again, he purchases 102. He's not eligible. But on 10th of March, he goes for a different product. So the product is different from the first date of purchase. So in this case, he is eligible. So this is how we are going to consider these points and scenarios and build the solution. If you are interested in solving this problem, please go ahead, download the workbook and try it yourself and post your answers and comments. Let's get started now. With this data, let's go and have a look at the solution approach to solve this challenge. On this page, I have the steps to solve the problem and on the right side, I have a snapshot of the table. Our end goal is to create a measure that will show us the number of eligible users for this campaign. When you build this measure, first step is to create a virtual table to get the list of users who are eligible. How we are going to build that table is the first step here to find out for each user what's the first date of purchase. For example, for user ID 10, the first date of purchase is 1-1-2019. And in the second step, I'll find out the products the user bought. 
in this case 101. Third step, we'll find out the products the user bought after the first date of purchase. In this case, we have 119 and 111, two products. The fourth step, we'll find out the count of items that the user purchased that are not found in the initial purchase. Finally, we will count the users who have at least one product that he or she purchased that is not available in the initial purchase. This will give me a list of users who are eligible for the campaign. From there, it's a matter of counting the users and producing the measure. Let's now go and build the measure in DAX Studio. I'm using DAX Studio because we are going to build a table first. It's very convenient to build it in DAX Studio or even in Tabular Editor. Let me click on DAX Studio. Studio. Now I'm in DAX Studio. First, let's get the list of all the available users from the table. For that, I'll use evaluate. We can use the table function values and we'll get the user ID. We run it and I'm getting all the users who are there. There are total 58 rows that means 58 users. From these users we need to apply the filter and show only the users who are eligible. For this let me use add column so that we can add a column to identify the users who are eligible. So I'll use add column. Let's add a column name. I'll call it result. The first step is to get uh, the first date of purchase for each user. Let's use calculate min of purchase date. Format the DAX and run it. Now you get the first date for each user. Next we need to find out the products that were purchased on the first date of purchase for each user. It's better we create this calculation and assign it to a variable so it will be easy for us to handle. This one I can call start date. List of products on the date of purchase is called start product. This is going to be a table as it's returning the products. Let me use calculate and I can copy these values of users and change it to product ID. So I need the product ID in this case where the date, purchase date should be equal to the start date. So I am creating a table which will retrieve the products that were purchased on the first date. I can return this. I won't be able to return the values as it's a table. I'll get an error. So let's use concatenate x of uh, this table that I've created in my variable. And I want to show the products with a delimiter of comma format the table and when I run it now I get the products that were purchased on the first date for each user number 10 user ID 10 101 if you look at 14 we have 107 and 109 two products were purchased on first day now that I have the products that were purchased on the first date of purchase let me create another variable to find out the products that were bought after the first date of purchase. So I can make a copy of the same variable. Let's rename this to additional products. And in this case, I need to change this to greater than the start date of purchase. So basically it's returning the product IDs where the purchase date is greater than the start date. Okay. Now to visualize this in the results pane below, let me make a copy of this, this concatenate x and add
the pipe sign and uh, let me add here the second table additional products so this should give me uh, let me format it this should give me uh, the results where I should be able to see now the first uh, date of purchase 101 the subsequent purchases we have uh, different products so this is going to get qualified 105 and then a different product 120 that's also fine let's have a look at 25 where we have 114 115 again it's repeated so no new product so this is not going to be part of the campaign and uh, let's have a look at uh, 50 for example the same product has been purchased it's not going to be there 49 for example there is no second purchase in the first date of purchase there are different products so it's not going to be qualified as well so look at uh, 46 102 102 again but there is 103 so it's going to get called this is fine so how do you identify for each user if there is a product that is not there in the initial date of purchase for this we can utilize the set functions in DAX let me just quickly create another instance of this let's have a look at how the set functions work let me start with evaluate let me create a sample table here with just one column where i have uh, one and two if i run it you get one and two now <coughs> let me also create another table but we'll assign this uh, to a variable called table one it's called t1 and I'll create another variable but this time I will increase one more element and we have one two three let's say if you want to find out the common uh, elements between these two tables then we can use the set function intersect intersect of table one and table two so in this case we have one and two are common so it should return I have an error okay I I haven't renamed this to table 2 let me make it table 2 run it I get 1 and 2 over if you want to find out the elements that are in table 2 but not in table 1 then we can use except let's use table 2 and table 1 this is what we are trying to achieve table 2 represents in our case the additional purchases t1 represents the initial purchase so i want to find out what is in table 2 but not in table 1 so in this case looking at this example we should be able to get the third one three okay we get three that's the element that's not there in the first one suppose if you have uh, the same elements then you don't get anything because there is nothing special here suppose if you have uh, let's say four it's not returning anything if you have something completely different let's say five and six you get five and six as they are not available in the first one we can utilize this within our table over here so let me get rid of concatenate x i'm going to return except the second table is the additional purchases and this is the first purchase products now this will return the elements that are there i need to count in this table if number of records are greater than zero that is a candidate for the campaign qualification so i can use count rows now let's format this and run it so we are getting 211 you see blank here that's because uh, this is not going to qualify for the campaign now in order for us to use this table within a measure to count the number of users we need to get rid of uh, the second column which is the result i can go and change this add column into a filter table function so i don't need the column header here so i am creating over each user id and generating a table and counting the number of rows there so i need to check if records are greater than zero that's the condition 
if that's true it's return the user id this is good let me try and run it so we will know now how many users are qualified there are 23 rows so that many number of users are qualified for the campaign so if you want to return the count i can simply say count rows of this table this is a measure so to return a measure in this window below i need to include it within curly brackets if i run it i get 23 as the result now i can transfer this code to a power bi as a measure so let me copy this portion of the code switch back to power bi let me create a new measure here and i'll name it campaign users let's paste the code confirm it so let's insert a card visual and show the number of campaign qualified users so we have 23 users who are qualified for the campaign so with this i have come to the end of this video hope you enjoyed it if you have any other solution for this challenge please feel free to share it in the comments thank you very much and i'll see you in a future video